Hello YouTube. Got another little woodworking project for you today. So it's getting towards that time of year, springtime, and everybody's gonna be planting their flowers and gardens. So what's the worst thing? But it's little rodents getting into your garden and eating everything. So I'm gonna make this little wooden box trap. Uh, I built these years ago for a buddy of mine that has beagles and he'd go catch rabbits for his dogs. And this has a unique feature. It automatically resets itself. So there's no, no uh, metal clips and all that stuff to play with. So as the little rabbit goes up in there and he steps on a treadle, down comes the door and you got him. And if you want to release him, you just simply just pick up on this and walk away. This is made out of poplar. Uh, we're going to make our little version here today out of just some good old white pine. And I use this expanded metal for the end because if you use something much lighter than this, they literally will chew through a lot of different type of wires. So you sort of have to take your time and, uh, or you have to sort of take precautions and make it a little bit stronger. Here's some of the white pine I brought back from the sawmill. And what I normally do is I'll cut it down because a lot of the white pine has these big nasty knots in it. And I don't know about you, but it cost me a lot of money and time whenever I nick a planer knife. And these knots on this pine will definitely tear up your knives. So um, we got them cut down into some rough pieces. And um, we're gonna take the top of this uh, trap off and show you the inner workings of it before we get started here. So I'm gonna try to set you up here. I'm going to go ahead and pull the lid off of here and you'll get to see what makes this thing tick. Now I will get the camera back over here. And it's nothing more than just a square box. The wire pulls right out of a slot, just, just a saw kerf. So that's not a big problem. There's a little board up front here. And what this does, you put your bait in there, whatever you want to try to catch them with apples or whatever. That way the bait don't get underneath the treadle because this is what makes it happen. So when he pushes down on that, that literally knocks down the lid. So when it resets itself, it just comes up and holds itself. So it's very simple. The only thing that uh, you have to really get right on the money is the placement of all the components. So let's go over to the joiner and we'll go ahead and start planing down some of this lumber and get it to dimension and we'll go ahead and start on this project. Okay, we're here at the joiner, and I put a little bit more of a close-up shot so you can actually see what this feeder does. It has three wheels on it, and the, the wheels have tension on them like a suspension, spring-loaded. So as it pushes forward, it holds the board down. And I set the last two wheels up on the outfeed table, so it literally is not pushing it down over top of the knives, just on the outfeed only. So we'll go ahead and shut, turn this on here and show you a couple boards going through up close. You can see the result. Now you've got a flat board and it's perfectly uh, smooth. So we'll feed the other couple boards through here. Now it's off to the planer to make it the same thickness. Here at the thickness planer, 
And we're gonna get the thickness set to approximately seven eighths of an inch. That's what I like to finish out at. So we'll start out about 15 sixteenths and then we'll flip it one time and get down to our seven eighths. And that's about what the size was on the other one. So let's start the dust system up here. We're at the joiner here, and I like to use the small joiner to do the smaller boards. It's a little bit safer. And what we're looking for is a straight edge. Now that's perfectly straight, and we will rip it to width after we cut it to length. So. Okay, we're going to set our stop at 24 inches because all these boards are four, or 24 inches long and we're going to do the same process that we always do. Let's go ahead and square one end up. And get down to the stop. And we'll go ahead and repeat that process till we're done and then we'll have all of our blanks. Okay, we're here at the table saw, so we'll go ahead and set this up the final width. And now we're cutting the other side of that saw cut off of there, so that um, it'll be a smooth cut. Let's we'll smooth that. Okay, we're back over here at the box trap, and just to show you, it's nothing more than just a saw curve. And we're going to be coming in three quarter inch from the end, and the cut itself, if I can show you this, is a half inch deep. So, we'll go back over to the table saw here. And this is a very simple cut, you don't need a dado head. So we're going to lower the blade until it's just the top of that board. This is half inch thick plywood. And to get our three quarter inch in, we're going to be going over to five eighths on the fence. Reason being is I like an eighth inch kerf saw and there's a lot of argument over that to this day. A lot of people like thin kerf. I know this is an eighth of an inch. I know if I set this at five eighths, this is going to be three quarter inch. So. You can pretty much count on that. Uh, if you use the thin curved blades, you have no idea what that will be. So I like to sort of keep the outside of it to the nicer wood. So you want to be real careful going through. So I recommend setting your miter gauge up. And all you're going to do is just follow this through and we're not going to we're not going to back drag that and also get all your stuff out from underneath there because otherwise it won't be a flat cut so we're just going to go ahead and and it's as simple as that so we'll go ahead and repeat the process and all the other ones and we'll have our basic box ready to go here and then we can start making the components so i'll be with you in a minute okay now that we got all the pieces cut um, Double check before you assemble it and make sure that that salt kerf is enough to accept this uh, mesh and that's, that's fine, it's got enough play in it. So the first step, <coughs> I had made up gauges and it's nothing more than a simple block of wood set at a certain distance for when I assemble and build cabinets. And I know what I, I want a 3 8 of an inch reveal on here and instead of trying to lay out every individual board and I see people do this over and over they'll, they'll they'll put a line on each end they'll get a straight edge 
and it just drives me crazy. Um, now I know that distance just layout is a lot faster and we're only going to put three screws on each uh, top and bottom and you want this removable normally I would tack this together with a brad or a staple but we don't want to do that because we ever have to get in here to fix a component um, you're going to be kind of sorry and just pre-drill it I'm not going to get into too much detail here What's nice about this was just basically some scrap wood that was laying up at the mill. And we'll just bring it to the edge of the bench, making sure that this end down here is absolutely flush because that is going to be where the uh, wire will go in there. And we'll go ahead and screw this down. And once we get this box close to being assembled, we'll start making the pieces for the inside. So I'll be with you in a minute. Okay, we got the parts cut now. This is off the uh, existing box strap and I just want to show you some details here if you plan on making one. The dimension of this treadle is 12 and 9 sixteenths. And whatever the width of your box ends up to be, you're going to deduct a quarter inch off of the width. So. We already done that on, on a new one. It's gonna be a little bit different because of the boards, what they finished out too far as width. The little trip mechanism is five and a half by inch and a half. And at the very top of it, we have just a little 45 chamfer because that is critical when that door comes up so it don't get caught on there. Um, I'm not sure if that's dead center, but we're gonna give you some dimensions here. From the actual bait trap end, it's gonna be six inches exactly to the center of this hole. So six inches and then whatever remainder is, it's gonna be about six and nine sixteenths. The placement of, it's gonna be one inch in from the end here. And you're just going to hold it over a little bit, an eighth inch, so it don't uh, drag the sides of that when it goes. Now, on the side of the box trap, we're going to have to lay out the pivot point. So we'll do it from the um, back of the trap. So 13 and a half. And we're coming up off of the board itself, not the very bottom, because that will make a difference. It's going to be an inch and a quarter up. And that will be your pivot point that's going to line up with this. So if you do this correctly, everything should work when you put it together. This is two and a quarter by the width of the box, so this should fit in there snugly. And it's going to sit basically like that. And then you're going to have this piece on here. And then the trap door itself. We'll go ahead and get the measurements off of that for you. And it's going to be 7 eighths in by 1 inch down will be the pivot point for the back door. And we'll have to take this apart, but um, it's about 5 eighths in, 5 eighths in from the end here will be your other pivot point for this to hinge on. So we'll go ahead and get everything uh, pre-drilled here, and then we'll go ahead and do some final assembly and test it out and see how the balance works on it. So I'll be with you in a minute. Okay, now that we got all the pieces cut to size and I put this treadle on here already, the, the actual little trip device, and we'll go over these hole locations one more time. This piece is 12 and a half inches long, and you're gonna make it one quarter inch less than the width of the box. So if you wanna make a bigger trap, you can. Just make sure you allow a little bit of clearance, which should be exactly a quarter inch. Then the hole location is six inches to center, centered in the board. And I make th these pieces out of three quarter inch just to be a little bit lighter. Now the actual trap door that springs shut, 
you're going to go five eighths of an inch on these hole locations. On the side of the box, from the business end, you're going to go 13 and a half, and you're going to go seven eighths. This is inch and a quarter high, and this is an inch and an eighth down, and that just about puts you perfect. Um, so we'll go ahead and put this together real quick and give you a quick demonstration how this works. And again, you're going to take a little bit of patience here because I'm going to put a little bit fatter screw in there. You sort of have to take your time, put this stuff together. Now what you don't want to do is over tighten things because this has to float in there. And once you got this fairly centered, you're going to back one of the screws out a little bit and you want this to float in there. You don't want no resistance on that. Okay, now on the back door itself, same thing. We're going to uh, line the screws up. And we're not going to attempt to make this tight at all. We're going to just slowly work it left and right. And you could probably use dial rods, but you would have to be really precise with this. Now you can see when the animal comes up here and steps on this, the door slams shut nicely. And you have to do a little bit of tweaking. You can see how nice it resets. And then this little front piece here, this is very important because if you don't put this in here, the animal, whatever bait you put in here, eventually all that stuff's going to go back in here and jam up and then this trap will not function no more. So you want to put this in last and make this removable because you may have to get in here once in a while to clean that up. And it's an exact fit. But you want enough, just, dis just enough distance so this clears but not enough gap in here so debris falls back in there. Because every time the animal comes up to get the bait, his front feet are going to be on here. He's going to reach down in there to eat. Boom. You caught him. And then if it's a little rabbit or whatever, you can just take him somewhere and let him loose. Hopefully they don't catch a striped squirrel. That would be really bad. Okay, our next piece we have to do now to finish this trap is just to cut this piece of uh, expanded metal. And we'll go down to the metal shop around back and I got some of this expanded metal and we'll just cut it out with a plasma cutter. I don't know if this will fit this box, I guess so. And then um, once we get it cut out, we'll go ahead and install it. And basically you're gonna do the same thing on the top of this. Nothing more than six screws and make it all removable because you might wanna get into your services. But you can see how strong that is. Uh, you can get yourself a nice little handle or get yourself a little chunk of rope and staple it down very inexpensive but uh, this is just uh, our, our pine off of our sawmill and you could make anything off of it you know it, just a little bit of creativity so we'll go ahead and cut that piece of expanded metal and we'll show you how we did that we'll be with you in a minute okay we're down here in the metal shop now and um, we're going to cut some of this expanded metal um, I buy this stuff by the sheet because I make various guards and stuff for the sawmill with it anyway so all I do is get a sharpie and you want to sort of figure out where it's going to fall on like one of these flat spots. So in this case six and a quarter is coming right across one of them faces and our eight inches is falling right halfway through one of them other ones so it, it placed real nice. So I always clamp a straight edge and my plasma torch, it's a Harbor Freight, it's nothing great but uh, it, it does a fairly nice job. So, all you want to do is clamp a block of wood. And you don't have to get really carried away as long as you're following that long as a visual. And 
use gloves, <laughs> you'll get burnt. Uh, this thing basically uses an electric arc with compressed air and uh, it's not something you should stare at. So you should put some goggles on. And I just go right over the top of my glasses. And if things go right here, this should just come right across this. Alrighty, and that should be about cut through. And all we have to do is turn this thing around. I don't think we got that one right there. Turn her head. There we go. And we'll go ahead and turn this thing around and cut the other side. And that is how simple it is. A nice neat cut, or you could use a grinder with a wafer wheel. Um, this is much easier and faster, so we could actually just clamp this back right into here and then just make that other cut. So we'll be with you back upstairs in the wood shop. We'll see you in a minute. Okay, we're back from the metal working shop downstairs, and there's our piece of expanded metal, and just slips into that saw kerf. And the only thing I got left to do is to fasten in that little piece there. But we'll go ahead and put the top back on. And nothing more than running in a couple screws. And you should get a lot of years out of it. Um, now I would recommend you don't put nothing on this. Uh, leave it raw pine. Because you get too much of an odor on it with paint and um, it might not, might not be as effective as far as the animals, they might not like it. So there you have it. The self-setting box trap. Make yourself a little rope handle or whatever you want. Um, the advantages of enclosed traps are if you get them have a heart traps that are all wire uh, and you do get a skunk in there. Uh, you you have to put something over top of it and a lot of animals uh, get very aggressive So this way only thing they can see is out the end. So when you go to let them go You can actually get yourself a, a stick or something and push this open and and just stay out of the way but uh, This is a very old design works very well So I hope you enjoyed this video um, We will be back down at the sawmill this Saturday with the Eddie Horvath and hopefully we'll show you some more sawing videos, maybe some bigger logs. And I hope you are enjoying the clarity of the, the new camera an angle on that. So um, everybody have a great evening and I'll be talking to you later. Bye-bye.